screen visible students ppt screen yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. so good morning all so today is from today's class uh, we will be dealing with module 4 okay so module 2 i completed yesterday module 3 i'll deal with later so with respect to module 4 you will be learning about the op concepts right object oriented concepts with respect to the programming language python okay so we are dealing with uh, the topics like classes and objects classes and functions and classes and methods and the inheritance which we also include encapsulation the other uh, uh, op concepts right encapsulation data abstraction polymorphism all those things operator overloading all those things we will also deal with in this a topic system. So the main topics as per your syllabus are like this. So today's class, I am now dealing with what is exactly a class and what is exactly an object, how do you create it, how do you use objects, right, in Python, right. So uh, the agenda of today's class is how do you create programmer defined types. As you all know, when, how do you define a class basically? Um, any idea you have learnt in your previous semesters regarding class objects? How do you define a class? Class keyword followed by class name. Definite. Uh, I'm not asking the syntax. The definition. So if I ask you define a class, how do you define it? How do you define it? It is a collection of objects. Objects. Okay. So it is a collection of objects. Right, or you can tell it is binding of data as well as the methods together, right? Or you can just tell that a class is a, a user defined data types. Yes, so whenever I create a class, it is like I'm creating a new data type wherein I can create its own variables. So, variables of class are nothing but my objects, isn't it? So, I can create my own variables. And so, how do you create a programmer defined? Uh, types that's what is the first agenda of our class today followed with next the attributes because in python there are uh, this uh, uh, there's some difference when i tell attributes so we'll see what is that uh, called as an attribute here and instances acting as parameters right followed with the math assignment for you all to do it fine so to just illustrate a simple example uh, about a class, okay, uh, may not be an appropriate, but a simple example which we have just taken here is we have a, a house here, right? We have four members who are there inside the house, okay? So what? How do I relate these four members to the house? How do I relate it? What can I tell? Can I tell that? All the four members belongs to the house there? Yes? Yes or no, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So then, suppose say I have a, a TV which is inside the home. Okay. Now, how can I relate these four members with respect to the TV there? So what will these people do with the TV? Can they operate the TV? Yes? Yes or no? Yes, yes ma'am. Who belong to the house. Can they use the TV? Can they operate the TV? Or they can't? They can. can. They have to. They cannot operate a neighbor's home uh, TV or any other appliance. But since they all belong to this house wherein the TV has been located, provided all these four members are the members of the house there, okay? So I can easily use the TV which is there inside the home. Very simple as it is, right? 
now if i take this whole scenario with respect to classes and the objects right and the data can anybody tell me what is this house now is it a class or is it an object or is it a data what is this house now class is a class right so class basically as i told you it is now having the data and the methods that operate on the data right and the class which you create is like a data type it is not uh, it is a dummy it is a skeleton it is a blueprint it can be used only when you create the objects right now can anybody tell me these four members are what to me with respect to now the house class what are all objects are all the object right see these are all the objects now which now belong to the class so now whatever objects that i create it all belongs to the class right now can anybody now just tell me what is this tv right now this is inside the class what can be inside the class data data so now this tv now acts as now the data for me and you all know that so the picture only quite it is quite is quite very much clear that the picture here this data which is my tv is not accessible outside yes so anybody else who does not belong to the home cannot access the tv or cannot operate the tv yes or no it's very common thing right so you cannot go and operate your neighbor's tv or any other uh, uh, this thing right you cannot go and drive the neighbor's vehicle not possible why because that is their property whereas this is your own property it's a private uh, member inside the class now you can see now the data is secured or not secured the tv is secured or not secured secured it, it is a secured you cannot place your tv outside the home right if you place tv outside the home someone will come and take and go easily isn't it right so you we emphasize on the data security so i put the data inside the class such that it is accessible only by home students only by whom only by whom a subject Ob by the object. objects right so the emphasis is on the data data has to be secure data cannot flow around anywhere i cannot go and place this tv in the street it's my property how do i go and place the tv in the street where anybody can do whatever they want no that's not possible so this picture will just tell you like what is a class what is an object and what is exactly data and in op the emphasis is on the data so i want the data security uh, to be done in a right manner i don't do want the data to move around in my program so freely okay so when i talk about op you all know that op stands for that is object oriented programming so our python is also an object oriented programming language and the concepts of op started somewhere in 1960s okay so it was 1960s but then it came only uh, to the screen only after 1980s mid 1980s okay right so this op concepts came to picture when they had to create a new software which was more complex right as the complexity increased so they wanted some new uh, approach to design the softwares right so they came up with the approach of op so op basically as i have already told you people it is emphasizing on the data we want data we want someone to handle the data in a right way so as the coding increased with size complexity increased with respect to software systems they were developing as the size got increased large and complexity over time they switched to op concepts right so using op you we have several programming languages which you have done which we have seen uh, with respect to python python is also an object oriented programming language so till now all these days what we were writing the programs was a procedural oriented uh, programming language so very simple as it is we never bothered where the data was flowing right 
simply we wanted a solution to a problem right so you all know in procedure oriented programming the focus is on writing functions or procedures which operate on the data isn't it so we want a function to be designed more preferably so i break my program into functions right which operates on the data gets the solution to my problem whereas in object oriented programming the focus is not on functions rather it is on uh, the objects means to say we are dealing with the objects creation that means to say creating new data types which contain both data and functionality together so when i have data and functionality together it's very simple any data inside my class will be only accessed by those functions which are defined inside my class nobody can access the data there right so we the more emphasis is on the data and the methods that are designed to work upon the data right so now how do we create this um, uh, programmer defined data types that means to say i have to create a class right so as a programmer you must have the skill of creativeness right the motivation involved in writing the programs then only you can design op concepts and you all know that the op programs or the op related um, the concepts is all based on real world modeling so we are all objects i am object table is object car is object everything are objects of a particular class yes right so similarly now we will just see how do we create our own classes so till now we have used many built in data types yes we have we used any objects of classes till now students have you used any objects of classes till now yes ma'am which objects which classes have we used list list see everything can is an object isn't it so when i create a list it is a object of class list when i create a variable of uh, string it is object of class which class str similarly tuple similarly dictionary similarly int so when i write x equals to 10 x is not a variable try to understand x is an object of class x equals to 10 when i write x is an object of which class integer int int so x is equal to 10.2 when i write x is an object of class float float everything here is the class and whatever variables you now created till now they are all the objects similarly you can also create a new data type very simple as it is so new data type if you have to create you have to create a class isn't it see in float list they are all the class to create a new data type you have to create a class okay so before we go for the syntax and other things let me now uh, see how exactly you can create a new data type okay our own data type use a different data type to represent point so you all know point means what what is a point ma mathematically if i tell point in mathematics how do you represent a point 2d point students how do you represent a 2d point In mathematics x comma y okay so you have a value x a value y which the value x represents the point i mean the value on the x axis on the y axis so you know that okay so let us now design a data type for my point okay so mathematically as you all know that there are two dimensions when i talk about a point and uh, there are two numbers a point is represented basically by two numbers as you have told x comma y and you all know that that x comma y is a single entity or a single object isn't it right when i tell point point is what x comma y i don't tell x is different y is different there it is a single entity okay 
parenthesis with a comma separating the coordinates. So you usually write a parenthesis and a comma with x comma y there. Okay. And you all know that 0 comma 0 represents the origin and x comma y represents the point x units to the right from the origin. Yes or no? X is what students? X is what ma? If I take the origin here, towards the right of the origin is your x and y will be up from the origin. Yes or no? Do you all agree with that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Now, I will ask you to write a program representing a point. Okay, I will ask you to read a point. I think we have already done the programs. Uh, read a point from the uh, user. How will you read a point from the user? What are the different ways to represent points in Python? One, two ways also using tuple. No? Using tuple, very good. In the simple way, before you go to tuple, module one, only module one, using? Using? Someone is still using list. Simple. Simple terminologies, you tell me what is a, how do you represent points? There are two uh, things, x, x and y. What do you do? Simple. Okay. Using two variables to hold x and y. Not necessarily, it, it can be even float. Points can even be float, not necessarily. I have two variables, depends upon your uh, convenience, whether it is int or float, whatever it is. So x comma y, I store it there. The second way of doing is, I will store the coordinates as elements in a list or a tuple. So I cannot use dictionary or a set here. So I can use a list or a tuple. So for example, I will write ls is equal to your value x comma y, like this. I will store. Okay. So this ls is my point. That's the second way of doing it. The third way which we will be learning now by creating a new type. So I will now create a new type only which represents the points as my objects. Right? So I can create a new type only wherein a type is like my data type or point uh, concept. Okay, let us see the third way of doing it because we, have, we know how to do the first and the second. The third way to do is to now create a class. So I should now create a class which now represents my programmer defined new data type. So I should now create a class. After creating class, I should create the objects. See, class is a skeleton, try to understand. It's a blueprint. See, when you construct a house, we create a blueprint. Blueprint is not the house, right? It is just a, a rough way of how your house will look after construction. So just a blueprint. So you should create objects when you, after defining the class. Okay. Let us now start with the class definition. Could anybody recall how you define a class in Java? What is the keyword use? What is the keyword yeah. use? Class all or why? Class name. Class name. And after that? Open braces and braces. Within that, you will write the members and the methods. Right? So in Python, let us see how it looks. Just see this. Same thing again. We have a class. Class keyword is the same there. Followed with what is this? Class name. After class name, you should give the colon. There's no flower parenthesis, you all know that. To represent that, we have a colon here. And below to that, you will write the definition. As of now, I am not dealing with the definition. I have just put, and you should there, it should be indented. That is there. Indentation is must. And I have just written the string. What is this string? Can anybody guess? String enclosed within three triple quotes. Comment. Um, comment. Comment. Okay. So it is also called as a doc string. We also call it as a doc string because 
comments usually act as documentation uh, purpose, right? Is used for documentation purpose, so we call it as doc string sometimes. Okay, so it represents a point in a two D space. I have just told, right? So as you can know here, uh, class definitions in Python basically can appear anywhere in a program. So you can write in between or in the end, wherever it is. But a good habit is always give after the import statements in the beginning itself. Okay, so the syntax for writing a class is very simple. You have a header, header which consists of the class name, that is the keyword class, followed with the class name and ending with a colon. You should end with a colon. And after that, you should write the class body, and the class body should be indented, right? And right now, I don't have anything inside my class body, so I cannot leave it blank. A class cannot be blank, right? You should write something inside that. So I just put a doc string. That is a comment kind of a stuff, which is telling what is the class used for. Correct? Or you can also write one more statement here. Can anybody guess if if uh, I don't want to put any body inside the class right now? I don't know what has to be designed. Which keyword can you use, ma? Which keyword? Huh? Which keyword can you just use? Default no. Guess? No, 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 it's not default. Suppose say I right now don't know what has to be designed. Right? I don't want any executable statements. I want no operation, NOP. NOP. The keyword you forgot? Students? Which is the keyword? NOP operation. Pass keyword. Pass keyword. Right. See, pass is an executable statement, but does nothing. Does nothing. It is no operation. Nothing. NOP. Right. See, I can even just write a pass there. Right. Right now, I don't want to put anything inside it, but I want the definition for class there. Okay. So we can write our own variables, methods, on all those things. As of now, I am not dealing with that. Okay, so we will see that in the later classes. Now you know how to design now a class as it is. Now, as I told you, class definition as a whole is is a dummy entity. So you should create objects, right? So how do we create objects in Python? So we all know that right now a new data type is ready by creating the point class. So I should create its variables or objects or instances so that it can be used, right? So we call creating the new instance or the objects is called as what students? What is the procedure called? Instantiation, right? So how do we instantiate? An object is an instance of a class. The instantiation goes like this. You see, blank equals to point, open brace, close brace. You have to call the point class. Very simple. Like functions you are calling, no? Same wise, you have to call the point class. So when I call the point class, when I call the point class, right now it is no arguments. Remember, we can give arguments also. Right now it is no arguments, right? When I call a point class, it will create an object. So what is blank for me now, students? An object. An object of which class? The point class. Point. Okay. So if I just give or type only blank, right? Right? And you all know that when we create the object, memory gets allocated. Whereas for class, there is no memory allocation. So you can see the point object at 0x something. So it is giving me, what is this 0x something? What is this number denoting? Address. So the hexadecimal value, which denotes the address where exactly the blank is now being stored. Right? Similarly, when you just type point, I just type point here. 
so it will tell point is now what of it is what students it is a class right so it is just a class there okay so i'll just show you the same there can you all see the ideally screen students yes ma'am class point with what students colon then enter so you can see it will give you an automatic indentation there okay so i'll give the doc string point um to the point i'll just give to the point that's it so to the point 1 2 3 then end it right so my class is ready now if i just give the class name so it will definitely tell you that it is a class you can see uh, there is some convention made by python right see so your class name is only point but it has made some convention so let us not bother much about it so now point is a class now is that clear students yes or no yes ma'am how do you create objects now you should call what you should call the class class right so right now no arguments remember i can give arguments i can give arguments try to understand right right now there is no arguments so blank is an object now if i just give type of blank can anybody guess what is the type of blank what is the type of blank blank is an last point class point so as per the convention the um, python has done something here let us not worry so it is class point now if i just give blank what it gives see the point object that is my blank is at particular location means to say blank is now an object having some memory location whereas point is nothing nowhere having anything right it's a dummy entity right just a class there is it clear students yes yes or no with yes, this ma'am so how do you create a class what is a class what is how do you create an object so you can see the variation in c++ how do you create objects in java how do you create objects in python how do you create objects so different variations you can see there see when i talk about attributes so what are the attributes um, i'm just talking about the data attributes okay right so in python your user defined classes will have two types of attributes one is class attributes the other one is the instance attributes right class and the instance slight variations when you go with java and when you go with uh, c++ in python slight variations with respect to the attributes when i talk about so what are this class attributes as the name indicates class attributes are defined inside the class so inside the class whatever i define they are called as what attributes students class attributes and these class attributes are common to all the objects of that class common in sense they are being shared by all the objects right so whatever attributes you define inside the class they are shared by all the objects of that particular class sharing in sense there is only one copy being used by all the objects that is class attributes next is instance attributes as the name only indicates instance attributes are defined for individual objects right for individual objects you have the attributes being defined and these attributes are available only for that object or the instance right so you should be very careful so when you are dealing with the uh, programs what are your class attributes what are your instance attributes so you should be very particular in designing right so as usual uh, the uh, 
uh, attributes of one instance you know that since it is with respect to one particular object there won't be sharing of instance attributes right so attributes of one instance are not available for another instance of the same class so there there won't be any sharing whereas class attributes are being shared by all the objects whereas the instance attributes are not available for everyone instance attributes are particular to a particular instance right so as of now in today's class we will deal creating only instance attributes class attributes we will deal it in the next classes right so let us see uh, how do you create instance attributes okay um so we can add instance attributes by using the dot notations okay so for example i want uh, you all know we are designing point so point will have how many attributes ma what are the two attributes for points x and y so i will assign the attributes for a particular for a particular uh, uh, object so blank which is an object we call it as dot x and dot y so it is called as the what attributes they are x and y are what attributes students x and y are what attributes instance instance attributes because i am creating with respect to an instance okay it is uh, with respect to a particular instance so x and y so it is left to the designer now what should be a instance attribute what is a class attribute right remember whenever we deal with python class attributes when i create it is shared by all the objects whereas instance attributes is with respect to a particular instance okay so i write blank dot x is equal to 3.0 blank dot y equals to 4.0 right now uh, dot operations dot operator you all know so if you want to access anything like from a module math dot py right we write dot operation or string dot upper case something like that so we write dot operation similarly here to create the instance variables for a particular instance we use the dot operator okay and we call this as my attributes is that clear is that clear student yes ma'am okay so we will rank dot x is equal to blank dot y is equal to 4.5 okay so very simple as it is now you can see now the instance that is my blank will now have two attributes one as x one as y right so these are the two attributes there okay so how exactly now the blank looks some on object diagram i have just written you can just see now blank is an object of which class students point point and blank has two attributes so this is the location where your blank is stored x and y and it is assigned to 3.0 4.0 very simple as it is right so it's an object diagram there which represents how exactly your blank looks right it is like your visualization right now i just want to read the values okay i assigned it i i got to know there are only two attributes i assigned it how do i read the values from my blank object suppose how, how do i read the value of an attribute how do i read it suppose say i want to print x value which is inside my blank how do i print it students how do i print it blank dot x blank dot x 
so i just cannot access x just like that so i should write blank dot x because x is located inside the blank object right it should be blank dot x so you should access it by using the dot operator see it is the knowledge of the programmer what attributes he has created it's a instance or a class so you should be very careful so blank dot y if i write it will access 4.0 right now just tell me what is this statement what is happening is x same as blank dot x or they are different is there any ambiguity here in this students speak out blank dot x is what kind of an attribute instance attribute instance attributes so if i write a statement blank dot x what the interpreter does what the interpreter does how will it uh, evaluate this students how does it evaluate this it will tell the interpreter that first go to which object blank blank, blank object and then go to its instance attribute that is what x retrieve the value and store it in x yes now just tell me is these two same or different ob objects they are i'm not talking about the value anyways it will copy 3.02x it is a different entity in the program or the same entity different it is a different entity in my program they are not the same entities try to understand see blank dot x is the one which is present inside the object x is a normal variable for me isn't it so when i write blank dot x what does it mean go to the object blank which refers to the location and get the value of x right so after getting the value assign it to a variable named x so there is no conflict between a normal variable x and the attribute x these two are different completely different entities try to understand they are not the same right right so you should know the purpose of dot notation so purpose of the dot notation is to identify the variable of the object i mean to sorry the attribute of the object right is that clear students is that clear is that clear yes ma'am this is some simple example here then can anybody tell what i am trying to do what is this statement this block it creates what class point class, class point right now the definition is empty so don't worry about it i have created a class point it is a new data type then next line p1 is equal to point what does it do it creates, it creates an object. object first object then what are these two two statements telling me so the creating point, an attribute so yes so the point class the objects of the point class that i mean to say they have two instance attributes x and y see remember the instance attributes for all the objects of the class will be same suppose for example if p2 create martira p2 only it will not have three attributes x y z no it will be the same instance attributes try to remember right why because whatever you write in the class attributes will be shared by all the objects so i cannot use class attributes i should have instance attributes only try to understand the differences so x and y is the instance attributes for all the objects so i initialized it to 10 initialized to 20 so i am just printing what does it print for me what does it print students what does it print 10.0 and okay i've already done that okay so i'll execute on the visualizer so whatever i told the object diagram 
all those things you can visualize here okay see now you see the frames see what is point point is a of type what ma class yeah. next p1 is equal to point so what is p1 to me it is what instance point instance, point instance. what happened okay it's a point instance then p1 dot x p1 dot y when i write it is creating instance attributes for p1 so you can now see see under this p1 there's a x created as 10.0 and also y with 10.0 can you now see p1 is pointing to a memory location which contains x and y so, clear students yes or no yes ma'am okay then it prints fine yes now what i'll do is i'll just do like this just see what will happen again what is p2 now for me p2 is what an object of class no, point. Okay. okay second object of the class point so what i'll do here is i will not initialize my um, instance attributes for p2 okay i'll write it like this what do you think it will do what will what will it do it may give error it will give error. an error see you know that the instance attributes are x and y but it is your duty to initialize it you have not done it you have done for p1 but you have not done for p2 right it is the job of the programmer to do it let's see what will happen what do we get what error do we get see p2 it is it is just an object no you have not initialized the instance it attributes for it right but i am trying to access p2.x p2.y so you all know that the instance attributes will not be shared by other objects so every object should have a copy of should have a copy of what students should have a copy of instance attributes instance attributes that is x and y here okay so what error would you get when i give p2 dot x and p2 dot y can you see the error what is the error what error attribute error attribute error so i would have told you in your exception classes attribute error so attribute error will come when you don't define or when you try to use an instance attributes which is not defined for a particular object so you can see the point object has no attribute so called as x right and definitely as it is line by line for this it is giving me an error if i rectify this it will give the error for this anyways yes sir no students get it getting it yes ma'am okay. so display is error as called as point oh, sorry attribute error okay now let's look at this can anybody tell me what is now x and y what kind of attributes they are class attributes class attributes because they are defined inside the class one thing second thing class attributes are uh, different for every objects or shared by every objects of the class shared by shared by every objects of the class so you should remember which attributes you should use now okay now i will execute the same here let's see what will happen Probably yes. So let us see how things will go now. Can you see now? See the difference. Earlier, what happened for P one? You created X and Y. Similarly, it will also create for P two. But here you can now see since X and Y are what attribute students? Class attribute is created within the class itself. Are you getting? Are you able to see that? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, P one is an instance of class. So print P one dot x, P one dot y. So what does it print? P one dot x, P one dot y. Two, three. Okay. And since x and y are class attributes, it is shared by all the objects. No issues. I can access it. Two and three. Next, I create P two, which is another object of point class. 
I'll print p two dot x p two dot y. What does it print? Will it give me an error that it will print? It will print. Mm -hmm. It will print because x and y are my class attributes here. It will print two comma three. No issues. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes or no, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The last thing is about uh, the instances acting as the parameters. See, every time initializing is not good, isn't it? So you should have a method reading the values from the user like that. Let us see how we do it. I have import math. Fine. Um, class point. So I have a doc string here. Just observe this. So this is my class definition, which is empty right now. Then I define one function. What is it function defined by? Trade point. It's a function. Remember, it is not a method. Method is a function defined inside the class. There's a difference between a function and a method. Right now, this is a function. And this function is taking one argument called as p. Right? And what is this p? p is nothing but instance of my point class. Right? So just see this. Can you observe what am I trying to do? What am I trying to do in my point, read point method? Sorry, function. I'm trying to read what students? What am I trying to read? What X and Y value. What are they in general? In general. Clause. In general, what are they? In general, what are they to the object P? Attributes. Class attributes. Class. Class attributes. Is there anything defined inside the class? No, ma'am. Oh, then what are these attributes then? The instance attributes. They are the instance attributes. They are not the class attributes. I have not defined inside the class students. Okay, they are the instance attributes. I'm trying to read the instance attributes from the user through a function. Right. Similarly, I have another function which prints the point. Okay. So printing the point, I am writing it in this way. I will tell you about this in the next class, but you can normally give print here, no problem there. So print x coordinate is what students? Uh, p dot x, y coordinate is what ma? p dot y. Okay. So the main intention is I am I want to in, uh, highlight that instance can act as parameters to my functions. There's no harm. See, this is a function. Inside the function, I can use the attributes. No harm. Now, can anybody guess? The attributes X and Y are of what specifier? Private, public, or protected? Which access private. private? It is accessed in some other function. It is not a method. It is not a method, students. X and Y is a what access specifier then? X and Y. Protected. Protected. Mon. Public. Man. Public. If not private, if not protected, you will tell public. Huh? Why it is public? Okay. Because it is accessed uh, in other. Other function. See, it is not accessed within the class method. See, when in something is tried to be accessing outside the class methods, it is definitely a public. It is not a private, it is not a protected. Okay. So next, I have another function, distance, which takes two arguments, P1 and P2. Uh, I'm trying to calculate the distance between the two points. You all know how to calculate distance between two point students? How do you calculate? A distance between two points. Yeah. What is the formula? Are you all there? If I ask a question, you become silent. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
How do you calculate distance between two points? Square root of x2 minus uh, x1. Okay. Minus yeah. Square root of the difference between the x coordinates plus the difference between the y coordinates and its square. The difference with square plus difference with its square. Right. So I am just calculating the same. B equals to p dot sorry math dot square root p1 dot x minus p2 dot x its square plus p1 dot y p2 dot y its square. So what is double star here? Double star students. Power. Power. Okay. Then return b. Just returning. So I have three functions which take the point objects as my parameters does the job. Very simple as it is. Now, take the first object, P1. Next, what should I call now? Next, what should I call? Which method should I call? After the read, read point, right? Passing first object, which is my first object students, P1. This will read X and Y for P1. Similarly, I'll create another object, right? I'll read the point. P2, x and y for P2 from the function. Then I will compute its distance. That is P1 and P2 passing to the function distance. Next, I am displaying by calling the function print point, passing P1 as the ob as a parameter. Similarly, the second point, passing P2 as a parameter to print point. Yes? Yes or no students? Yes, and finally the distance. So don't worry about this. I'll tell you about this in the next class. Normal printing you can do. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll just execute this. Only reading, I'll do it. Because time. Only reading I will just show for you. And reading and printing both I will show. Let's see. Okay, this is a class point, fine. Read. So printing, you can give your normal printing statement. This is a different way of printing. So I have just included. Tomorrow I will just tell you in detail how it works. X coordinate is what? P dot x. What is my y coordinate? Print. What is y coordinate? Y. Y dot. P dot. Y. So I will just show you for one object, it is the same. So call the function read underscore point, passing which object? P1. Similarly, print underscore point P1. Okay. I want one question to the answer there. What's wrong? Okay. Invalid syntax. Okay. Space is there. No, no, it rectified. Yes. See, can you see now? Point is of type point class. Read point is of type function. Print point is of type functions there. Okay. Next, P1. Now just tell me, P1 is now passing as an argument to read point and the argument name is p is p a reference to p1 or p is an other object will it take pass by reference or pass by value pass by reference or pass by value students okay observe P and P1. Is it pass by value or pass by reference? Students, just observe this and tell. 
reference mam yes so when you pass p1 to any function as a parameter it is passed by reference the it points to the same memory location in the object okay in the memory sorry same memory location in the memory of that particular object okay so i am reading enter the value 3.0 submitted right can you now see p and p1 are pointing to the same memory location yes so p1 dot x is same as p dot x both are pointing to the same memory locations here can you see that next y coordinate say i print 4.7 okay can you see now the p and p1 are pointing to the same memory location x and y are the instance attributes and the return value is none i'm not returning anything next so p vanishes after the function terminates isn't it because p is a local variable it vanishes now you can see the updations in p1 understanding students yes or no yes ma'am okay so print point so again you can see p there's a argument here p p is a reference to p1 they are not different copies they are pointing to the same copy in the memory okay so it will print the coordinates right x coordinate is 3.0 y coordinate is 4.7 yes students is it clear yes or no for the assignment so whatever i have done the same thing point you should take one point you should read okay but using all functions no want anything without functions so you should write a function to check whether it lies in the first second third or fourth quadrant okay then you should take three points check whether they are collinear what do you mean by collinear students only near lie on the same line they lie on the same line so you should know what are the formulas used okay any one you can use it i think if this is a b c so the formula is the distance between ab plus the distance between bc should be equal to the distance between c yes a b c if i take this is three points ab plus bc should be equal to the distance between ac right that formula you can apply there is another uh, program which you have to calculate the arc length of an angle right so you can just browse out what is the arc length of an angle by assigning values to radius and angle data attributes of class arc length so arc length is my class and the attributes are what students what are my attributes radius and angle right so right now deal with instance attributes only fine right? i'll post this you can do it thank you any queries any queries students no ma'am okay one sec you have any queries okay how do you create user defined data types how do you create user defined data types in python by creating what you should you create user defined data types students by creating class classes okay what are the different types of attributes you have In class attributes, class attributes and, instance. and instance attributes. So, which is better to use class attributes or instance attributes? Class attributes. Class attributes is better. Means it is it can be shared, no ma'am, to all shared. the. Shared. But if I want any object to have private content to itself, I don't want it to be shared by other objects. Yes. so in instance you should always prefer instance attributes 
rather than the class attributes. I'll tell you in the next classes, you will know how exactly it deals with. Hmm? Okay. Fine. Okay. I'll post the assignment. Try doing it tomorrow. Tomorrow we will discuss it. Thank you, students. Any doubts you can ask me, otherwise you can quit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.